Well, good morning, YouTube. Um, so, it's a weekend in the UK, and it's not raining. Ah, blue skies. Almost. A few clouds, but hey, bet there has been of late. So, time to catch up on a few jobs. Today, we're um, going to be giving some new blood to the ZX. Let me show you what I mean. So, here she is out of the garage. Um, hasn't been ridden a lot this year. Bless her, like last year, and like every other year. But today, we have got a nice new hi flow filter, and I've always used these. I know people say, oh, they're cheap, they're rubbish, they're nasty, but I've always used them and they've been great. So that's what's going on. And some Castrol Power One, which <laughs> you can see has been sitting around for a little while, waiting for this to be done. So basically, there's your filter in there, and between your manifolds, underneath the radiator. So that's obviously got to come off. Um, but first of all, what we've got to do is drain the oil. And the oil plug is under there. Let me go to the other side because you probably won't see that. Um, so if we go under here, I'm actually going to turn you upside down. There we go. So the drain plug is under there. Looking a little bit crusty, but there you go. That's what we're draining today. New filter on. No oil in. And then... Um, Ooh, might even get to take it for a ride, who knows? Right, let's get started. Okay, toolbox at the ready. Filthy old washing up bowl that I dropped me all into at the ready. Quite leaned over, so let's get in there. I think, I remember right, this is 17mm. So you shall soon find out. Um, let's try and get you in there as best as possible. Um, but it ain't going to be easy. So, oh, where are we? I can't see. <laughs> Oh, it's not easy doing this with a camera and a socket in your hand at the same time. But I want you to see every little bit of this. So let's just check. It's a 17 mil. Oh, good guess. Let's see, uh, my retention is working well today. So all I'm going to do now is crack the nut and then obviously let the oil drop. So really what I want to do is get this camera on the stand uh, so I can actually get two hands free. So uh, hold on, join me in a minute. Okay, so I've got you on the stand now. So I'm just going to move that to one side a little bit. Plenty of rags around the area just for any kind of spillage. And let's crack the bolt. Now a lot of people say with uh, doing your oil, you should warm it up first. Um, but I haven't done in this case. To be honest, use oil runs quite freely anyway. So it's not much of an issue getting it warm. As hopefully you'll see any time now. Let's move that round a bit, so try and get a little bit of a better view of it. There we go. So there is the oil coming out and as you can see because it's not done many miles it's actually quite clean um, it's red in color when you put it in and to be honest coming out it's still pretty much red in color um, to be fair the bike doesn't get used that much um, which is a bit of a shame I do about 600 miles a year I should really do more but such is life time Unfortunately, he's not my friend. <laughs> There's always loads of stuff to do. But anyway, that's all being drained out, so I'm going to leave that to drain for a little while um, and leave it until there's nothing more coming out, and then we'll drop the filter off. Now, one quick thing I did want to show you is on the, on the sump plug, there is a magnet. And hopefully you can see, but there's nothing on there at all. Nothing at all. So that makes me very happy. That means the engine itself, the internals, everything else, there's nothing self-destructing, which I wouldn't expect there was, to be honest, but uh, it's always nice when the magnet's nice and clean when you take it out. Really good stuff. Okay, so the sump plug's back in. All the oil's drained out, as you can see there. Sump plug's back in its hole. Now, one word of warning for this. Do remember it's a, an alloy engine, and you don't want to be hankering on that too tightly. You just need to nip it up. Um, what I'd use is a little bit of sealant around the bottom two threads, 
and then it's going to be sitting on the mating face and that is enough to stop it leaking to be honest so um, yeah do not whatever you do over tighten that nut because if you do your only option is to buy yourself a new oil pan and that's a big job now the next thing is to get the oil filter off which as I say is tucked in there and as you can see I've got a tool on there already um, I do these just over finger tight when I put them on for one good reason they're not easy to get at now I've got a tool in there uh, as you may be able to see and that clamps onto the filter itself and so all you need to do is get your hand in there <laughs> easy said and done so basically get your hand in there and just crack that um, it should only take half a turn to get it moving um, do bear in mind as well because of where it's located you are going to get some oil residue dropping down there so you need to use your bowl again and you need to use your rags again but uh, right next job oil filter off join me in a minute okay so the oil filter is loose I've just cracked it half a turn um, just turn the handlebars slightly let's see if we can get this live there you go a couple of turns and as you're going to see there's going to be loads of oil falling down on your exhaust and that will swank like hell when you first start it up so don't let that worry you but basically twist it off like that oh Martin starting his uh, bike up and there you go there's one oil filter um, if you want to dissect it take it to bits and see if it was nice and clean that's fine but I know for a fact that this has only done about five or six hundred miles so <laughs> the oil's hardly been used but I always change it once a year anyway right let's clean that up and um, then get the new one on and there we go the new oil filter is on now again with this you don't need to go crazy um, as tight as you can get it using your hand is fine uh, what will happen is the rubber inside will swell and it will seal quite nicely I've never had a leak by doing them by hand so you don't need a tool on that you don't need to really anchor down on them yeah just get yourself yeah get yourself a good grip on it and then when you can't tighten it anymore that's about right okay time to fill up with some oil now anybody that's ever topped a bike up with oil will know it's not the easiest job um, the filler on most bikes on the side there and it is at a bit of a strange angle and trying to get something in there is a bit tricky so do yourself a favor get yourself some cooking utensils <laughs> so these are the sort of thing you buy in places like the range or your cheap uh, pound shop and basically it's just a funnel and all I've done is put a little bit of garden hose on there so I can keep it nice and upright um, it pours relatively freely and relatively slowly um, and basically makes your life a lot easier now you know I think you need about something about four liters in this so I'm going to put about that in and then see where we sit uh, after that okay so that's about a couple of liters in now one thing to note um, you have a glass window there on most bikes not all but most bikes so at the moment you can see there that it's uh, empty now one tip uh, for those that don't know it already and I'm sure most of you do um, you need to get the bike level before you use that as a guide so what I'm going to do is level the steering wheel up grab the front brake and very carefully pull the bike towards me now what you may see when we get it on the level is that starts to fill up and as it's not at the moment that means to me there's nowhere near in the foil so I'm going to gently let the bike go back on the side stand again let go of the brake and a little bit more okay so let's put a little bit more in there I'm going to do the same again pull the front brake on level the bike up and as you can see now we're starting to get a little bit of a level there that is probably at the moment somewhere on the bottom level um, so I'm going to put a little bit more in there and then start it up because what we've got at the moment is the oil lines and the oil filter won't be full of oil so that will wear down again so just a little smidgen more and then we'll start it up and let the oil flow round and then measure it again okay put a little bit more in there um, put the cap on obviously as yes, you can have oil spraying out of there when you start it up now, the bike hasn't been started for a couple of months I guess so it'll be interesting to see how well it starts as well so uh, let's uh, disable the alarm switch it on 
now in neutral, that's good. Choke on, a couple of flips just to get a little bit of fuel into the carbs and there she blows. inspection to make sure there's no oil coming out of the oil filter. Yep, that all looks good. Uh, as I said earlier, you're going to get smoke. Don't worry about it. It's quite normal. You do get some oil drop onto the uh, manifolds and it is going to smoke a little bit. There we go. So again, quick visual inspection. Yeah, all looks good. Most of the oil's now burnt off the manifolds. So, I'm going to stop it again. And let the oil settle just for a few seconds. And what we've done now is actually uh, primed up the oil filter. All the oil lines will be full of oil as well. And now it will give you a true indication, indication easy for me to say, of what oil we've actually got in the crankcase. So, again, brake on. Pull the bike towards, get it nice and level. And as you can see, now we've got nothing indicating on the glass at all. So this is why you have to get it started up and get the oil flowing to make sure that you're okay. Right, obviously need to top it up, so I'm gonna do that now. Oh, there goes the alarm again. Okay, oil topped up, cap back on again. Just a quick visual check for leaks again. So, for the last time, I think, front brake on. Bring the bike towards you. And bang, there you go. Straight on that top mark, just where it wants to be. So that is the oil changed. Again, not a difficult job. So hopefully it's a bit of help to somebody. And um, just take your time. Don't force things and certainly don't over tighten bolts. These are delicate engines and they are alloy so you can easily strip stuff. There you go. Enjoy YouTube. Catch you later. And the good news is now the weather's got even better. Look at that. And the missus says, oh, I've got some ironing to do. Why don't you nip out for an hour? So, who could refuse? Alright, the girl's going to stretch her legs today. Excellent. Morning. Leaving me on my own again. Oh, here you are. Leaving me on my own again. Yeah, give me a kiss. I can't reach. Mm. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. Bye. I'll do the ironing while you're gone then. Right. 